Hello again, this is Robert Anderson with Infusionsoft. Uh, today I'll be going over the landing page builder. Uh, particularly right now you're seeing the new user interface. Uh, there are other videos to get to the campaign builder in our help center uh, from the old UI. And all I'm doing right now is I need to enter a campaign and build a landing page that I'll be using to capture leads, uh, collect leads really from my website or Facebook or whatever we're using it or wherever we are. So without further ado, let's go ahead and on the left side, go down here to campaigns. And honestly, for this case, it doesn't really matter which campaign I edit. If you do need to add one, you can go, go to the very bottom of explore campaigns. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and click into just apply person notes, view and edit. So regardless of whichever campaign, whether building one from scratch or using one that you've already built, I need to create this landing page, right? So from the left side in goals, I'm going to pull landing page. And I'm going to call this test one because I'm creative like that. And then here, uh, you'll see it load a lot of different templates. So if you're watching this video, I would imagine that this is your first time using this builder or you're fairly new to it. I would say instead of starting from scratch, try to find a good starter format from these templates. Just as a heads up, and I'll show you here in a sec, you can change out all the images, change out the colors, change out the font type to an extent. And honestly, um, that's just a good place to start. Uh, we've tried to create this builder with you in mind as a user to make sure that you're able to create something beautiful and, and honestly practical uh, for whatever you're needing it. So for now, let's just do limited time offer. When I click preview on a given one, uh, it shows me kind of what it would look like. and just You'll see this in the builder itself too, but at the top right, you'll see different formats for a desktop viewer, for a tablet viewer, and for a phone viewer. Um, it's a good rule of thumb to try to build for phone first and kind of consider desktop second. Uh, mobile is just up and coming, especially if you do a lot of events. It's just people will probably pulling it up on their phone. They check their email on their phone and they click on your link. What are they going to see? Or if they go on your website, it's just a good rule of thumb uh, moving forward. But anyway, regardless of that, I want to use this template. So I'm going to click on the screen button. And I'm going to name mine test one for consistency. Uh, just some optional settings. Not a, You don't have to do this right off the bat, but if you're pretty aware of your branding already in terms of like formal schemes, uh, I would definitely click into this just to make it easier for the next step. But font styles, we do have some added in here already. It's possible that the one you use for yours uh, isn't on this list. Uh, there can be ways to uh, use an HTML, so code in your own fonts. But that's if you want to get super fancy. For this, try to find one that, that you like, uh, whether it's uh, sans serif or serif. Just try to pick one that looks close to what you need. And this is just sizes and fonts, not, not nothing fancy. And then brand logo, if you have a logo, definitely put it here. It'll just make it easy for a couple of pages. We've tried to build this already for you. So next step, the first thing you'll notice is just the main layout here. The logo that was dictated in the original setup page is auto-populating right here. And you'll see some space for some social media icons. So I'll use these to show you real quick. When I click on something, you'll see the right-hand side come up. What image I'm using, I can click and replace that image. So you'll see a lot of different icons. If, for example, if you don't have Facebook, but you do have Google+, Plus, because Google+, Plus is the, the most hyped thing, right? Um, that, that can be totally used. Or if you have something else, like a symbol for your website or a scheduling thing, uh, you can add more icons to this as needed. Resizing. Uh, any image will have this for you. I'll take it back to how it was. And the link, that's what really matters about having a social media icon. When they click on that Facebook page, where are they being directed? And that's where you'll go to your Facebook and actually copy that URL here. And then some other little options, the color. That's where you're seeing this red come through. If I wanted that to be this kind of teal color or this mint color, you'll see that it changes that, kind of adds that to it. You can add your own color of your own styling, the little hex code right here, if you need to. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and go back to color. And I'll save that. And I'll just go back to red. Just leave it red. Pretend that's my color. Spacing is just how it's uh, 
padded and stuff. Don't worry too much about this if you're not really used to uh, designing websites. Uh, we try to make it uh, look good as it is. Feel free to attack this if you need to. And lastly, alignment. This makes sense to a lot of people. Left, middle, right in that block. So that make that might be more useful for other images on this page. So now the next thing to consider is what are you offering? When people come to this landing page, what do they really want? Again, as I, as I recalled out before, when I click on something, I'm able to edit it. In this case, instead of maybe it's a three-month subscription to our life, I don't know, whatever it is. And I can edit the text just by typing here. It pulled out the default fonts we originally set up in the first page. Again, don't stress out if you don't really care what font or you haven't decided that because you're a smaller young business. Uh, you'll get there when you get there and that can be updated when you get there, right? No stress. Other things to consider is if you want to make this a list. Let's say you have the three benefits of attending and I want to make this a ordered list in order of priority. You'll see that one pop up. That's all that means versus bullet. Alignment, same thing. Every time you see that left, middle, right. And even though we have default fonts on the, fonts on the original page and default colors, you can always change the font here as well. And if you need a hyperlink, add colors, same view as before. Uh, next, form. What fields are collected? And now just rule of thumb, the more fields you request on a page, typically the less conversion you'll get on it. So if this landing page is for something really valuable, like something that's worth $2,000 and everyone knows this is a really good deal, uh, you might go ahead and ask a couple extra questions. But if this is typical and you're saying you get this PDF with why you should care about what I sell, then you probably only need first name and email. Maybe last name if you really want to have it. But this is your first engagement with this person. So just first name, email. That's all I need to get your name so we can build this relationship together, right? Then you email and follow up. And again, the subscribe button here. You can edit the text and try to be more personal than just subscribe. So sign me up or subscribe me. Uh, try to make it fun. If, if, if it's obviously if you're more professional service like a lawyer, I would still try to add possession to that. Like sign me up, like contact me. It just kind of adds that ownership to the individual. Um, and then color, again, anytime you see color, just ch helps change this element. And it's just to recap for another time, spacing and alignment. Alignment, just middle left, right. And then spacing for just fancy things that you really shouldn't worry about if you don't know exactly what you're doing. Uh, it looks good so far. And obviously, any text I see here can be edited, as I mentioned before. One other thing you'll notice here stands out pretty well is that image in the background. So if I click on that image, you'll see that blue kind of highlighted on the edges. I can actually edit that image. So if I scroll down, you can see it's add some transparency. I can clear that color to make it a little bright. Transparency kind of helps the form stand out more, right? Adds life to the page. So if I scroll down, I don't want that image. Let's say I sell, um, I, I'm a doula or something and I want to talk to women. This image doesn't really connect with anyone. So I might go to background image. And we've tried to connect to some stock images online. You can pick from an image gallery and just search on the right. So if I said uh, baby, for example, I actually never searched for this, so we'll see what pulls up. Yeah, see, so you see a bunch of adorable babies uh, here on the left, and that can be your background color, right? Or background image, sorry. So just like that, and you can change the background style to be, you know, that does not look good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's how you kind of interface with the background color. It's possible you won't want a color uh, image, only color. You can remove the image if you so feel. And again, I won't go over style and spacing. We've covered that a couple of times. It always does the same thing. All right. That being said, if I come down, you'll see a lot of different formatting. This is just adding text and images, nothing fancy here. And I can continue to add more. Let's say I wanted to add a video. I can just add a section at the bottom. So I can click add a section or I can go to the left and add a section. Think of section as a big block. See how this big blue area? That's a section. And an element is each of these little ones. So if I want to add a big segment, if I'm adding more like testimonials or something like that, go ahead and add a section, put that in the bottom, make it all fancy and such. Um, and then add elements uh, would be adding a video to that. So for example, I'll go ahead and add a section. And I'm going to make it um, something big here. Let's add a blank section. 
and I only want it one column. And okay, what elements do I want to I want to add? I can just click on this, and you'll see it pull up on the left. I would like a video. Now the video here is again. If I click on it, you'll see something come up on the right. Where is this video currently hosted? And you'll see some currently supported things right here where you can use the URL from. And there we go. The only other snippet I just want to call out because I mentioned it at the beginning. If you are fancy and, and know what you're doing with code and such, just be aware that there is this code element. By all means, play it with it to your heart's content. That's to add specific extra functionality that isn't perhaps drag and drop that needs to be coded in. And you'll notice that cart coming soon icon. Currently, you can't collect payment on a landing page, but we hope to add that in the future. Uh, last thing to call out here on this page is manage layout. Um, I can move each section up and down. And honestly, if you need to edit some sections, just whether some sections exist or some advanced layout, you'll come to the manage layout and you'll click on the section and you'll click on the row and then you'll get very specific about what you're editing. Um, so yeah, I won't get too in there. Just know that if you're having a hard time finding how to edit something, you'll want to go to the manage layout portion of this. Now let's say that this looks exactly the way I want it to. This is, I've designed it from, uh, edited it and such, and this is exactly what I want to publish to people. The next step now, and to consider, okay, when people hit that submit button, they actually do what you wanted them to do. What are they going to see next? Typically you have a thank you page, right? Thanks for doing what I wanted you to do. Here's some relevant information about what you should be expecting next to move forward in this process, right? So if it's something basic like a PDF or some sort of resource you're providing, um, you might just have a, a design a thank you page. If it's an event thing, you might lead them to a different thank you page itself as well. For now, just to be simple, uh, so just be aware that this would copy to your website. For example, website.com slash general thank you, right? You typically have a URL like that that was designed on your website and you're leading people from this landing page back to your website. Right, or if there's an FAQ page, if they just scheduled a consultation or something, that's where that's practical. For design a thank you page, we actually build it here in Infusionsoft. So I won't dive too much. We've covered a lot of the design tools for this. I just know that again, if I click on anything, I can edit those images and text. So let's say that this looks great. Next step. Okay, now that I've got my design all done, how do people see it? That's that's why I spent this this hour perhaps just doing this whole st this whole thing. So you do want to copy this URL. This is the URL, the default hosted by Infusionsoft URL, where people will know to find your page. Now, first thing you may see is, okay, well that doesn't look very human friendly. I don't want that. How do I get that on my website? Let's talk about that. I won't dive into detail, but if you see this custom domain section, if you click um, for example, um, event.website.com. Let's say that you've designed a little page in your website that's currently blank, and you want to connect this landing page so that it takes the place of that uh, website. So to clarify that, because there's I said page and website so much, I want this landing page to be like as if I had built it on my website. That's pretty much all I'm doing here. So if I click connect, you'll see all these instructions. It looks might look really intimidating to you if it does. Maybe we can share it on Facebook or do something else. Uh, typically, you can get some help finding these uh, things through their support for GoDaddy and such, but you can follow these steps pretty clearly if you know at least how to navigate your website. Regardless, this solves for, I don't want it to come from Infusionsoft, I want it to come from my branding, my website to build that up. Embed, again, similar to the other tool, but I don't want to worry about the fancy stuff. I might just create a page on my website and copy this instead. Facebook sharing, pretty self-explanatory. And then tracking, this is useful to you if you have a lot of Google Analytics, like you see here, Facebook Pixel. You want to see conversion. So if I'm using a Facebook ad, it gives me the option for pixels. And then I would have that, that code that Facebook gives me and put it in one of these three sections on the page, that will show conversion as people click through. That's what that's designed to do for either of these methods. And that's really all you need it for there, for kind of some marketing analytic data. So before, see how it says you're almost done? There's one thing that I'm missing. I need to click this blue button. Let's say I've done all this, go live. You'll see the publishing and done. You'll see this confirmation on the top left. And last thing, 
you'll see a light green color on the campaign itself. Uh, for more information on the campaign, there is another recording about this. But this here is good to go and just a little productivity hack. I like copying the URL uh, to the landing page and putting it on a note. I don't like having to click into the actual landing page to get that. So I just usually do that. I just drag out a note from the left and just put it right there. So anytime I need to promote this again, I'm not going to remember this crazy jumble of letters and numbers. I can always find it like that. So that's the landing page builder in a nutshell. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support team. Uh, we plan on making updates to this in the future. So uh, hang tight.